After lying to her and manipulating her for weeks, he comes in 30 to 90 seconds. She and her contemporaries just don't have any great experiences they're trying to repeat. Young women rarely need sex like their older counterparts, who've discovered by age 28 that priests and other purveyors of anti-sex propaganda were and are full of shit. <laughs> Very seldom will you meet a young woman who loves sex. Those who do began early. They're rebellious, independent, and have learned to take charge of their own orgasms. If she had an older boyfriend who could sustain intercourse, she finds sex wonderful, fun, and nourishing. Her first man. She heard about dirty old men as she was growing up. The tone of voice and disapproving faces made her fear older men. When she was 14, Mr. Pius, the Sunday school teacher, Mr. Boneher, the history teacher, Dr. Feelett, her pediatrician, or even her own Uncle Dick tried to fuck her. <laughs> she didn't expect it. She trusted him. She thought it would be some stranger hiding in a dark alley. All this is in the back of her pretty head. Don't even talk like the man mummy warned her about. Experience can help, but most limit themselves to young males, you know, marryable. <laughs> That's why they're disappointed, unfulfilled, and interested in you. An experienced 21-year-old's idea of variety means a tall boy, a muscle boy, a black boy, a chubby boy, and for a radical thrill, Randy Red Porsche's roomie, the 29-year-old Sammy Silverbeamer. <laughs> Living with a boy does not help her all that much. It does get her over the mystery of sex, helps clear up unrealistic ideas she had about male plumbing, and does away with most old wives' deals. Those who have lived with their boyfriends are sexually experienced at his level, meaning they've tried everything he knows. She doesn't get to learn how to really enjoy herself because he's so limited in his knowledge and experience just like you were and just like I was. <laughs> if she attempts to be assertive in bed, he's intimidated and manipulates her out of experimenting with any, anything except swallowing it or trying the back door. That's their idea of a wide variety of sex. Young women, even girls as young as 14, have the same undesirable, unpleasant qualities of adult women. Oh, really? Yes, they do. Caddy, viciously competitive over males. Don't be surprised if you have to contend with the 17-year-old sister of your 21-year-old lover buying for your attention and favors. Although this sounds like it might be fun, it isn't. It turns ugly quickly if either gets her ego bruised. One will threaten to tell dad or the other's boyfriend. And I know this from very bad personal experience. Right here in Whittier. Geraldine was my lover, and I can't remember her sister's name. Her sister was older. Like Geraldine was, uh, I'm going to guess, 20. 21. I don't remember exactly. Your older sister was 24. And uh, the older sister was trying to get me to make a pass at her. And so I told Geraldine about it. And, and then they had a big fight about it. And the older one threatened to tell the dad. And that was the end of my relationship with Geraldine. <laughs> oh, God. Random thoughts. The world feels new and fresh to the young. They sincerely feel it can be changed and believe they're the ones who can do it. Never be cynical or laugh at her idealism. Young females need to be hugged and cuddled. When you get the chance, give her plenty of both. They are not comfortable with competition or competing except with each other for males. Don't stress winning when, involved, when you're involved with her in any sport and she's around. Don't drive like it's Memorial Day at Indy. Don't play games with her if you share the view of Al Davis of the Raiders. Just win, baby. Don't let her win, but don't take any game deadly serious. Girls from the extreme upper and lower economic levels experience intercourse much younger. Nothing matters. They have too much or too little. I don't discuss them. The girl who places high value on academic achievement is Strikeout City. Her focus is in the wrong place to enjoy you while she's pleasing her parents or society trying to get a high GPA. None of them fuck like they dance. None of them fuck like they dress. They have no idea how they're overdone in those two areas. Her soap operas, television programs, and trash and alls have convinced her sugar comes with the territory. She's not really a gold digger. She just thinks that's part of the deal. Squash this concept early on, and I mean right away. 
It's okay to be nice to her. Take her place as Jimmy never would. Small, expensive, thoughtful gifts are appropriate. Bigger things come later. At the same time, you give them to a woman you had dated for months and months and were enjoying. When she begins reading Cosmopolitan, your star shines far bright. Buy her a subscription. There's a period each year when you can count on a thin supply of young women. From Election Day through New Year's Day, most of them grit their teeth and endure horrible treatment by their boyfriends, put off breaking up with someone who bores them shitless. Their world would end. They, they feel without someone special in their life during the holiday. Even worse, they get serious with anyone they're even casually dating in November to ensure they share the joy of Christmas. Watch out. This includes you. Tactfully keep your distance, but send or give her a nice gift. Stay in contact. She'll recover from this culturally induced madness just in time for a truly important event, the Super Bowl. General advice, lower your desire for physical beauty from 9.5 to 7.5 and watch 50% of the competition disappear. I can't say that often enough. If you concentrate on 9.0 and above, you'll be frustrated and humiliated most of the time. Stick with 6.5 to 8.0. From my experience, a young woman who's average looking with an average figure is far easier to meet, a much nicer person, and a better human being as well as being more fun than any stunning looking one. She feels appreciated for the first time in her life. She is. Okay, forget the high schooler. Her head is up her ass and will be for two more years. Proms, football games, Friday dances, Jimmy's bitching, totally rad, new VW. Forget the big titted girl. The competition is pardoned upon too stiff. Every male within 500 miles is interested. If you insist, Never mention her figure and don't even sneak a peek at those double Ds. She uses them to test you. Am I a sex toy or do you like me? Forget the beauty queen or any beauty. The competition is pardon the same pun too stiff. She's able to pick and choose and she's heard it all before from practice experts. Too much trouble, thinks she really is a princess. Besides, you have to deal with all the attention she attracts no matter where you go. People notice and remember you being with her. That's not a great idea for either one of you. Forget the disco dolly. She's the one who spends two hours getting ready for work. Three hours for the disco. Her expensive haircut requires 90 minutes for curling and spraying. She wears the latest, most expensive clothes, usually $300 plus to go dancing. She's only concerned with image, too insecure to be herself, while looking all the time for a disco dick to impress and marry. Forget all born-agains. Girls with doves, fish, or I love Jesus on their symbol, on their, around their neck or on their cars. They look normal. Some even talk normal. But believe, brother, believe, they're marching to the beach of different drummer. Hallelujah. Say amen. Whim-driven. The younger, the more ruled by instant gratification they are. For example, a 22-year-old can agree to a trip to Palm Springs in two weeks and wait and then turn down a, quote, better offer, unquote, three days before departure. A typical 19-year-old has difficulty keeping a date to go night skiing at Big Bear three days from now. If girlfriends call and want her to go to Vegas a few hours before she's due at your place, she'll call and apologize, maybe. As she spends more and more time with you, the more realistic she becomes, no matter how young she is. Just being around you has a tranquilizing effect on her. No longer is everything ruled hour to hour. In only a month, she can think ahead two or three days at a time. Eventually, she can plan from week to week. If you last long enough, from month to month, you'll never make it until she's able to think and plan and execute six months in advance. As I'm writing this, I'm planning a trip to Hawaii with a 19-year-old. Our affair has been going on for nine months. Recently, she's learned it's possible to plan ahead. Two months into the relationship, she was still so impulsive she ruined a three-day weekend not being able to turn down a better offer at the last minute. We both survived my ensuing explosion. I won't predict if it'll be aloha or adios. It was adios. Teddy bears. The younger she is, the more suspect you are. Sometimes she drags along her teddy bear, a female friend on the first pseudo date. Don't resent it. She has to take this initial step on her own terms, not yours. 
Her friend serves several functions, bodyguard, validation of your attractiveness, support in case you overwhelm her, someone to talk with or get out if you're boring. Teddy comes along until your chosen feels safe with you. This includes day ski trips, beach excursions, a spontaneous quote around that dinner, or anything else. Be enthusiastic about it. Include Teddy in all conversations and fun. Make friends with her. She will be grading you. She has the ear of your future lover and will certainly bend it. It's not productive to flirt strongly with Teddy, but let her know you find her pleasant and attractive as a female. If you patronize Teddy, you can shine it on forever. Anytime there are two females involved, things get complicated quickly. Teddy, especially if she's more experienced, may have given herself the assignment to test you under battle conditions. She'll bait you with emotionally loaded questions about sex or religion. Teddy may even bluntly ask how your children handle the divorce. If she's attracted to you, she may resent her feelings and try to destroy you in front of her friends so neither of them can have you. Strange, but true. If Teddy decides she wants her for yourself, she undermines everything you've built to date. In the end, she will feel like shit for what she did and won't go out with you either. The younger she is, the more likely she's bring Teddy. I've even had it happen with a 26-year-old. Let me tell you where that paragraph came from. This, there was this beautiful girl, and I mean beautiful, like a miniature Elizabeth Taylor. We flirted and kissed and fondled and everything, and then she went away to college at Santa Cruz. Eventually, I got to go up there in January. She didn't come home for Christmas, so I went up there in January at her invitation. And I got a nice hotel right on the water. I called her, and she couldn't meet me because her boyfriend was somewhere around. But tomorrow, she said, okay. So we had breakfast at a beautiful uh, cafe by the ocean. We talked about it. She said, well, I'll come over tonight after he's doing whatever he's doing. That's fine. So she came over and we had the strangest sex I've ever had in my life. This girl tried to keep, she wanted to spread her legs, but she tried to keep them together the whole time until finally, after about five minutes of, of me getting about three-fourths of my dick in there and her trying to keep me out, she finally gave up and let me all the way in. That's got to be one of the strangest fucks I've ever had in my life. It's at the bottom of an incline in Santa Cruz. And I said, I'll pick you up where can I meet you? You won't get in trouble. She said, well, you can meet me at such and so. So I met her there. And there she is with Teddy. <laughs> I had no idea. Now, how can this girl be in bed with me one day, the next day bring Teddy along? But she did. So I followed my own rules. And I was nice to Teddy. We drive down to this restaurant, get in the incline, go down. And we're sitting, it's right on the water. And this girl and I are sitting side by side in the Teddy's sitting across and she starts playing footsie with me <laughs> and giving me the sexy eyes. So I turn my chair sideways and I slide it back and I turn and look at the girl I'm with. And it just stunned me. I thought, well, that is really bizarre. I wonder if my, the girl I like is putting her up to that. So a couple months later, I asked her, I said, did you put up Teddy to play footsie with me? And she said, no, I didn't do that. And I believed her. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. I'm just telling you, they'll test you in a thousand different ways that you can't even imagine. You have to pass the fucking test. I passed the test. I didn't play with Teddy. I just stuck with this one. She ended up being one of the best fucks on the entire planet. It took maybe another year and a half. But this same girl was getting married in early 92. And she called me late 91 and she said, I'm getting married, but I want to come over one more time. And she did, and she wore me the fuck out. O-U-T out. I'll never forget that. It was like it was like her her uh, last meal before being executed, I guess. <laughs> the younger she is, the more likely she'll bring Teddy along. I've even had it happen with a 26-year-old. Rebs and others. Young women come in two basic models, conformists and rebels. Rebs are out number 20 to 1, but what a great group. They aren't hard to spot. Sometimes they're wearing something outlandish. However, I can tell by her walk. It's confident, arrogant, strong, and sometimes it's like she has a chip on her shoulder. Well, let me talk a minute about outlandish. There are a lot of, a lot of girls that dress in very outlandish outfits, and they are not rebels. They're very insecure. They've got some screws loose. They're angry about everything. 
and they're trying to piss off their parents mostly. And how do I know this? Because I tried a couple of them and they're just silly. Outlandish means purple hair, um, 1920s uh, flapper clothes, I call them goths, goofy hair, weird makeup, and all that. They're not really rebelling. They're trying to fit into some little niche because they've been rejected in every other clique they've tried to get in. They're useless. For entertainment, they intentionally piss off their parents or boyfriends. By being a rebel, she defines herself as different from her parents, different from her peers, different from adults. But she's just different, having only found out who and what she is not. Rebels are the ones who will date a man. Then identify the one who's interested in you by reading body language secrets. Looky Lou's will sleep with you. Many have been interested in me only because they were curious. After a couple of dates, they jump in bed with me once or twice and never hear from them again. They found out what they wanted to know and decided it's not all that hot, or they're so guilt-ridden about Jimmy they can't continue. The ones who didn't like me search for excitement with some other grown-up male. The ones who feel guilty go back to mess around with boys. Somehow that's not bad, where they make up for the transgression by getting engaged and remaining monogamous until a year after the honeymoon. Relax, except being curious. Don't feel indignant. She's just looking. You're an experiment in her life. That's how she learns. Be glad you could help. Her motives for dating you. You're asking her to go against everything parents, boyfriend, church, society, girlfriends have drilled into that pretty young head and heart of hers. Why will she do it? One element of her motivation is a desire to be seriously fucked the way she's heard it's supposed to be done. As you now know, her best experience does not begin to measure up with what she's heard from girls, read in Cosmo or seen in the movies. And for sure, there's a stereotype of men as knowledgeable and experienced lovers. Now this was written before free porn was everywhere on the internet. By now, all these young girls have seen porn and know what that's like. And most of them laugh about it. They know that it's not true. She knows there must be more to it, but this is one of her darkest, most closely held secrets, slightly behind masturbating and feeling terribly lonely. Lonely. She fantasizes what a real man would do with her. If she's a bit drunk, she talks with, to her girlfriend about what it should be like. Don't get me wrong, she's not obsessed with sex, but wonders if she's missing something important. So far, her boyfriend's best efforts aren't much. He wants his cock sucked all the time. He's reluctant to give her head and has no idea Clit isn't a mi miniature dick. That's if he even knows where it is. He lasts two minutes after entering. She and her contemporaries know on some level there's got to be more to it. Part of the attraction is your age. It makes you different, plain and simple. You're attracted to her because she's different from 38-year-old divorcees. <laughs> How's that for an understatement? Also, your age qualifies you to participate with her in a forbidden romance. It turns on females of every age. She wants to experience life. You have the knowledge and money to show her a world where she's only, she's only seen on TV and read about in people. Older lovers have a lot to offer, says Cosmo. One of her girlfriend's acquaintances has one. She's ready to give it a try. If she wants to shame and degrade her parents, this girl plays a game called Goy Ploy. She picks a male to infuriate and embarrass her parents. A goy if she's Jewish, a Jew, Jewish if her parents have found Jesus, others to piss off mom and dad, bikers, Mexicans, punks, or an older man. You are paying attention, right? She wants to piss off her parents. You're the perfect ploy to do that. She has to get caught with you so she can make a giant scene or scenes to rub her parents' nose in a whole sordid affair. That'll show them they were bad to her. They'll see it's their fault she turned out to be such a bad girl. <laughs> Daughters of the rich sometimes are just bored and want to do something. Totally radical. But poor little rich girls can play goy ploy too. Be extra careful. Irate wealthy parents like to prove themselves blameless by threatening legal action or using their connections to punish you for seducing their sweet, innocent baby girl. Foolish assumptions. As a married man, I was able to easily meet 
and date young women. After a few conversations and lunch, she realized I only wanted to nail her to the mattress and then to the wall at the nearest motel. After three of these fears, I realized it was not necessary to beat around the bush, so to pun. I only had to be discreet and make it tactfully clear what I wanted. She chose to participate in serious fucking or diplomatically passed. She knew from my approach and attitude that if she played chase me, catch me, fuck me, I'd lose interest and she'd lose fuck me. Courtship was simpler and faster then. No confusion about long-term possibilities. The goal was straightforward. My foolish assumption, after getting divorced, I would be able to meet and have real dates with young women. Wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. Married men are toys, nothing to take seriously. If she dates a married man, she doesn't feel used. She knows what the score was. If she gets entangled, she only blames herself because she reads Dear Abby or whatever blog took the place of Dear Abby today. Now that I'm single, she's confused about my purpose and goal. He's kind of a potential husband, but he's so old. Everything's muddled. She wants to get married someday, but she's been used and lied to by every guy over 26 that she's been out with. No matter what I say or do, she thinks I'm primarily interested in her slit. I'm something she's not countered before. I don't want to just nail her. I want to have a caring, romantic, fun-filled affair for as long as we enjoy each other. She knows that on some level from my attitude and approach. She even asked me directly, gosh, an affair, really? You know, like, I don't know, geez, what about my boyfriend? To answer that question and really understand her, you have to be clear on why she always has a boyfriend. But first you need to know which young women, otherwise you'll waste your time pursuing the wrong one.